time for Game Jam. The 2023 Brackets Game Jam is finally started. One of the biggest jams on H.io at this time, with more than thousands of thousands of participants, and all competing for the best game. Except me. For those who don't know what is a game jam, is a friendly competition where you have to make a game that fits a specific jam in a limited amount of time. Like for this one, it's 7 days. And trust me, it's pretty hard. However, this year the jam is diving deeper. And I'm pretty excited. So yeah, let's go create. The first thing that I always used to do before creating a project is planning, of course. So let me introduce my game idea. My main idea was to make a 2D game where you play as a blob, that jelly and kinda weird fish that lives in the deep of the ocean. And your main goal is to get deep as you can possibly can, to go in your habit, the deep. But it's not gonna be easy. That's because during the way you will might encounter some hostile creatures. And here it where it comes the challenge. So now that we have an idea in mind, meanwhile the Unity Project loads, let's organize a good Trello board with the first task to do. Good. Now that it is now open, we can start working on the game. And because I'm obsessed with making the design first, I decided to start creating the sprite for the blob. So I went on Pixelorama and watching this reference, I came up with this pretty similar blobfish. Then I imported it to Unity and give it some 2D basic up and down for low cursor movement, so we are able to move it around the scene. Nice. Next, because this game is based on deepness, I needed to create a sort of deep system. A system that permits the game to keep count the deep level of the player, and do certain stuff with it. Like if you reach a certain level of deepness during the time, you will might encounter different creatures depends on the deep value you're at. After that, to warn the player that is reaching a new deep level, I added this text that this shows up every 50 feet you reach. While to tell the player at what feet he is at the moment, I added this other little text at the bottom center of the screen, that prints the deep value in real time. Now because there is no water in the game, but just an empty, endless space, 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 I add this big, fat, chunky square, which is the water. But because leaving the water like this looks really bad, I added some post processing and now it looks much more um, intense. Now, you probably know that in real life, water becomes darker as down far you go. So to add that real life feature in a game, I created a script that controls the color of the water, changing its darkness through the time according to its deepness. So now we have a 2D working player controller, the dynamic color the water to dive in and text to warn the player at what fit he is. For the first day I think it's pretty nice, considering that I started working late. It's the second day. Yesterday when I was going to sleep, I started thinking of what if there will be a beginning place where the player starts its journey, instead of just spawning in the middle of the water. So I decided to create it. A sort of beginning place environment where you basically start your journey in a sort of cart filled of water. And when I got this idea, I was thinking about a place like the Santa Monica Wharf, but then it comes out to be like this. There is just a dude that sells fish and another dude who's trying to fish. Uh, nothing else. Oh yeah, there is the island, but that was foregone. Probably I will add something more later on, but for now it's not so much important. However, after that I also tidied the trailer board a little bit and I added some new tasks as well, such as a sprint function for the player and some enemies ideas. And why not also an NPC dialogue function for the two dudes at the beginning so they have an actual meaning in this game. For the sprint function, I just made this coroutine method that simply modified the player speed and added some bubbles particles to make sure that it's sprinting. While for the enemies, I created a shark that simply follows you, a type of poison fish that basically moves really really slow and a sub that shoot a spear gun when you're close to him. Pretty cool. It's the third day. The first thing that I did after waking up is adding some new tasks on my Trello board, which one of them is the game cycle. 
So that cycle that makes you able to repeating the process of play the game. So to achieve that I needed to create a main menu first and because I don't wanted to see always this cut between canvas or objects I decided to create this transitional panel to smooth the start and the end of the game with a fade in and a fade out. Then to make the game able to end I added to the player script this statement which checks when he touched an enemy. And when it did, the player died. After that, because the game was still pretty empty, I added an island. Some palms, some corals and many type of fish. Just for ambience and filling the emptiness. For the same reason, I added also a bunch of other enemies. Like this dolphin, this turtle, this lampfish and this eel. That it can be even called an eel... Uh, I don't know. After that, I polished a little bit the game by adding some particles, visual stuff and a cursor. That is basically a, a dead fish. It's the fourth day. There are three days left and I still have a lot of things to add. The game still looks empty, kinda repetitive and boring. And we absolutely don't want that. So this is what I did. What if the blob has a laser gun on his back? Yeah, that is the kind of gameplay I was looking for. It's the fifth day, and did you remember of what we talked about yesterday? Score system and bosses. So here is what I've done. For the score system, I simply added two new texts. One for the current score and one for the high score. Writing down some code in the game controller and add also the pop-up text of the point when you hit or kill an enemy. However, for the bosses, let me tell you what I was thinking about. First thing first, there will be only three bosses. Because, hey man, I'm running out of time and I don't even think if I could make them done. So there will be only three of them. No more. Second thing, the bosses will spawn at different deep. Like for the first boss it will be minus 1000, for the second boss it will be minus 2000 and for the third boss it will be minus 3000. The first boss it will be the Moby Dick. This pretty huge grey whale that has a big rectangular face that used to destroy the boats of the whale hunters. So here is how I draw it inside Pixelorama. Then I make some boss scripting, health bar and stuff and BOOM! Moby Dick boss baby, let's go! Ok, actually for the first boss I decided to make it pretty easy, so not so much stuff to do or hard things. It's the 6th day, and today we're gonna try to complete all the missing tasks for the game. So tomorrow we will focus only on the web page on itch.io. So what we need now are two more bosses. The two better options between all of this are the uh, Megalodon and the Kraken. So let's start with the Megalodon first. After drawing him inside Pixorama and put it in Unity, I obviously write a new entire code for the Megalodon. <laughs> and boom, we have a Megalodon boss. Now it's time for the last boss, the Kraken. Okay, finally done, also the Kraken. Today I should add also all the sounds needed and the music, but I'm so freaking tired and I need to rest immediately. M my eyes are bleeding. The gem was finishing in 30 minutes. I needed to add the sounds and the music yet and also fix some red errors. I was lost. Literally. <laughs> to actually complete the game, I imported a bunch of sounds from the PFXR editor and some from YouTube videos. Then because I didn't want to use a song already done or risking some copyright stuff, I tried to open FL Studio after 3 years and I tried to do something. So after add sounds, music and compile the player settings, I built the game. But while I was building the game, the time was running out to the end. My PC was so f slow and there was no chance that I could publish the game and submit it. 
But whatever, thank you so much guys for reaching this part of the video and even if I didn't submit the game on the Brackis Game Jam, it's still public on my itch.io page. So if you wanna play the game and beat all the bosses, you can play the game by clicking the link in the description down below. So guys, thank you so much and we will see you in the next time. Bye.